Welcome along to a quick ferry in the caravan from Maitland over to Cessna. Uh, my record flight time is a 0, 0.0, which is a record that I hope will stand for quite some time. So we've done our pre-flight, sign the paperwork, get that out of the way. We'll run through our pre-takeoff, uh, sorry, our pre-start flow. Fuel's on, ready to rock and roll. In, trim set, in, trim set, trim set. Stowed, idle, feather, cut off, up, indicating up. All those are in, off, down, down, off. We're on the grass, so I'm going to open the separator to start up, just in case we take any bits of dirt down the uh, intake. Park brake is on, beacon is on, circuit breakers are all in, avionics masters are off, starter is off, fuel boost is currently off. Flick down to volts and go battery on. We've got more than 24 volts, we're sitting at about 25 there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, but they're the wrong five, so we'll go fuel boost on. Checking the arming mechanism, and the fuel drops below three and a half PSI. The auxiliary pump automatically comes on. And then for start, we want continuous fuel flow though, so we'll go the uh, fuel boost to on. We've now got one, two, three, four, five to go live. Checking all the instruments, uh, showing what they should be. Nice and cold because it's the first start of the day. Zero. Uh, oil temperatures, ambient, and we've got fuel on board, the correct amount that we know we should have, and fuel float, most important one, is showing zero. Okay, clear prop. Two hand to start, one hand on the starter, one hand on the fuel control lever, check that there's no one around, make sure I've untied the prop. Okay, doke. So, starter switch on, and we have starter energy ignition on, propeller turning, fuel flow zero, oil pressure's rising, above 14% stable on the NG, below 150 on the ITT, and we'll introduce fuel into low idle. Now we're looking for NG, 25%, not above 600 on the ITT, 52%, not above 850. Uh, fuel flow is going to 120, up to start flow, starter to off, fuel boost to normal, standby power on, avionics 1 on, avionics 2 on. Might have to sit and wait here, unfortunately. So what we do, we can run through setting up our instruments. We've got Maitland's first knock set, 8.9 miles, 224 degrees. That's correct. Cross-loaded across to there. We'll set uh, 1018. We'll set it on this one, 1018. And it'll cross across to the other side, which it has. Thank you, Doc. So one of our first flight of the day checks is the standby power check. So we'll select generator. We need between 30 and 60 amps of load on the generator, which we've got. Uh, we will then go trip on the generator. Generator off light should come on. Standby electric power on light should come on. Generator's now dropped the load. Click down to alternator, which has now taken the load. Battery slot, positive charge, and we're making 27.5 volts out of the standby power alternator. We'll then reset the generator. Generator off light goes out. Standby electric power on light goes out. We've gained half a volt up to 28 volts now because we're running off the generator. Flick back up to the generator. It's now taking the load again. Uniform November Alternator dropped the load. And battery slot, positive charge like normal. Next two first flight of the day checks we've got to do is the overspeed governor check and the separator check, but we've got to run the power up to do that, so um, we're just going to have to wait until we can get onto the hard stand there so that we don't blow too many rocks around. Once this fellow's finished at the petrol station, we'll wander over. They're coming into the run-up bay. We'll point the back end away from everyone. Big prop makes a lot of air. Park brake. 
road can come on. Holding the controls. Okay, so we're looking for 400 foot pound of torque. Traffic uniform, there, we'll shut the separator. Should get a 25 foot pound rise, which we do. Open the separator. 25 foot pound drop. Now bring the RPM back out of the green. Press the overspeed test button. So basically, this has got two CSUs. And the second one is set slightly higher than normal operating limits. And what we're making sure is that, um, that it does work by resetting its limit lower than the normal one. So it should govern at 1750 RPM, plus or minus 60 foot pound once we add 200 foot pound of torque, uh, plus or minus 60 RPM, sorry. Add 200 foot pound of torque, that's governed well within plus or minus 60. Back down to idle, and releasing the overspeed governor test button. Okay, so running through our pre-takeoffs, we'll use the temp fish acronym that I use for just about everything, just with a few variations for the turbine. So trim, set, set, and set. Master is on, we've got the avionics masters on, propeller is full fine, park brake currently on for the run up, fuel, we've got the selectors on, we've got quantity, and we've got the shut off in, flaps set 20 degrees, indicating 20 degrees, visually confirmed 20 degrees, uh, fuel flaps instruments we have set, 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 and we've got no warning flags, Switches, we'll go the passenger lights on, even though we haven't got any passengers. Uh, controls. And hatches and harnesses are secure. We've got the door lights out, strapped in, doors are shut. Thank you, Doke. And then we'll pull out our hard checklist to make sure we haven't forgotten anything, which is simply trims, a set, fuel, is on both, flaps at 20, and the enunciators are all out. So take a safety brief, uh, we'll do that on the roll because we're going to backtrack for runway 23. Okay, so while we're backtracking, we'll run through our take safety brief. So if you have an engine fire failure, major abnormality on the runway, we're going to go to idle, in reverse if we've got it, which we won't have if the engine's failed. Pull up on the remaining runway, using the overrunning for required. If we're already airborne with runway remaining, then we're going to lower the nose, full flap, land on the remaining runway. If we're already airborne and uh, no runway remaining, then we're going to lower the nose, pick a field 30 degrees either side of the nose, and use flap as required to get into the field. If we're above 1,000 feet, given the, uh, the glide capability of this aeroplane, we've got the possibility of uh, turning back to the runway. So given the crosswind's going to be from our right off runway 2-3, uh, if we're above 1,000 feet, then we're going to lower the nose, feather 45 degree angle bank to the right, going into wind, so it blows us back onto the runway and re-intercept the reciprocal of our runway heading, which in this case is going to be intercepting 050 for runway 05. Okay, Mount Sierra has Whiskey Caravan. Lines up shortly rolls, runway 23, up at the parking system, traffic can make it. Okay, so our lineup checks will come up to high idle. Peter here, we're going to leave off for this flight. So we're VFR, staying well clear of cloud. Uh, pumps can remain on normal. Instruments are all set, igniters can come on, switches, we're happy with the recog lights, won't put the landing lights on for this one, separator can shut, trim we've already set, traffic we've made a call, and transponder will come alive itself. Okay, so ailerons into wind, pushing the power up, making sure the RPM is governing, goes above 1750, in case that overspeed test button had stuck in. There we are, it's governing, SB one's alive, SB two's alive, SB three's alive. We'll rough set our torque about eighteen hundred, and it should ram rise up to eighteen sixty five. Slight positive back pressure. Being so light, it'll fly when it's ready. But weather cock into wind. Got about five or ten knots across the nose. Looking for ten degrees nose up. Once we're through eighty five knots, flaps ten. Ten degrees nose up again. Once we're through 95 knots, there we go, we'll go flat zero. Reset 10 degrees nose up, shouldn't give us about 104 knots, which is our best rate of climb. Okay, approaching our downwind spacing, clear right, clear centre, clear left, power can come back 
to a thousand foot pound. We are below 150. First stage of flat coming out. We need to reach the front of the way. Juliet Delta Charlie is one zero miles to the south. Inbound, descending through 4,300 for circuit height. We'll uh, join up when the traffic allows. That's the right time of the circuit to be 27. So it's not traffic today. And then we're just looking for our 45 degrees to our aim point. Which is about one third into the runway at this stage. Just because we're taxiing for the other end. We are uh, on the land a little bit longer. There's the 45. Clear right, clear centre, clear left. Power can come back to 500 foot pound. Low 125. Flaps 20. Lower in the nose, catch that balloon. Then, as we roll on to final, we're looking for 500 foot pound of torque at 500 feet per minute at 500 feet. So, a little bit high. Let's put the torque back a little bit further. Last stage of flap, clear right, clear centre, clear left. Final checks. Pitches are coming up to full fine. Hit a prop disc up, it helps us with a bit of braking. Undercarriage is fixed, flap is set full, and the inertial separator is coming open. There's 500 above. That's coming down to V ref now. Start slowing down. All the way back to the idle stop, or to the other end of the runway. Lying level with the runway, letting it settle. There she goes. And to reverse. Help us slow down. Go back to low idle. Put some weight on the wheels. We're attracting the flap. And bring it out of reverse. We're still leaving it beta just so that we're not making too much forward thrust. Oh, there's someone not parking spot. That's annoying. Just coming under the brakes now. You can see by using reverse, we, um, we save a lot of wear and tear on the brakes. Generally best to keep it rolling so we don't have to use as much power to get it around. And we'll go the nose wheel straight. And we'll reverse it back in. Gotta be really careful reversing a caravan. The worst thing you can do is panic and step on the brakes. So you'll see that I've got my toes completely clear of the brakes at this point so that no matter what happens, I don't accidentally step on them. And I'm looking outside to regulate my speed. I want to go really slow, and only slow it by reducing reverse, rather than having to go too much forward thrust, or any brakes at all. So there we go, we're far enough inside the markers, coming out of reverse, start to pull forward, and at which point we can go back onto the brakes. But the risk there is that uh, you leap on the brakes, lands on the tail, which it, um, has been known to happen in the past with people. So, um, and uh, Dr. Charlie be. joins upwind runway 35 at 1,200. Well, we never so the right right. Thank Thank you, Doke. Now that we've ramped the uh, engine up, we'll just have to let it sit for a couple of minutes. That's not let everything cool down nice the and gently. Road, Julia, we'll just, uh, and then we'll go through the shutdown. Uh, Thanks for watching. Until next time. North of the runway strip.